I'm Mel Robbins, and early in my career, I was a lawyer for legal aid, helping people who had no one fighting for them. I met them at their most vulnerable. And you know what kept me up at night? It were the family secrets my clients kept inside and the pain it caused them. That's why I picked this quote for my next guest. There are no secrets that time doesn't reveal. Why do we keep secrets, especially from the people closest to us? Wendy's mom kept a secret up until the day she died. Just three months ago, an at-home DNA test revealed a shocking family secret, and Wendy is now in a full-blown identity crisis. I'm a 52-year-old professional mother who thought it would be fun to take a DNA test. Then, I bought one for my father as a birthday present. When the results came in, I was shocked to find out that my dad was not my biological father. We were both devastated. The worst part of this situation is that my mother passed away and took this secret to her grave. I became obsessed with uncovering the truth and finding out who my biological father is. I think I found him. And although that gives me some closure, I still feel that I'm in the midst of an identity crisis and I don't know how to move on from this bombshell. Mel, I really need your help. Wow. Did you ever have any suspicion that your dad was not your biological father? No suspicion whatsoever, none. In fact, my father and I have been very close growing up. He's always been my rock. We have a special relationship. My mom and I had a difficult relationship, good and bad, but my dad and I have been close. And my mom was always a little irritated about how close my dad and I were. And maybe some of this has kind of set, shed some light on that. I want to go back to the moment that you found out and you take the DNA test for fun, which so many of us, I think, have either done or are thinking about doing. You get the results. And what was your first reaction? Shock, uh, denial, sadness, all of these together. It was a roller coaster. It was um, feeling alone and abandoned and a bit of your identity feels stripped from you. So everything I thought I was, and, and the first thing I thought about was, I'm Irish, right? What if I'm not Irish? Like I have all these Irish traditions. And what if I'm not who I think I am? And the first 48 hours were really difficult because you just feel like everything has been taken from you. Wow, and how did you tell your dad? Very nervously. I spoke with people who were close to me and my younger sister gave me some great advice. Be better to do it over the phone rather than rushing up there to see him and be with him and to let him know how much I loved him. So I did that. I picked up the phone and I said, the results from the DNA test came in. Is there something that you need to explain to me? Am I adopted? And he was emphatic. No, you're not adopted. I remember everything. Um, did either one of you go, well, there must be something wrong? Entirely. We kept saying there has to be a mistake. And the process is, is just, there's really no way to describe it, but it's just complete denial. There has to be a mistake. You think about what did I eat? What did I do? Someone swapped my spit. It's just all these funny things go through your head. But we have been talking and when the second DNA test came in, that was more confirmation. And so we have been on this journey of kind of sleuthing it out. And how did he react as he started processing this? At first it was total denial, it couldn't be, and then slowly he has come to the realization that he understands this has happened and it did happen. And there's a lot of questions and there's so many different emotions and we're just trying to kind of get to the bottom of this. Well, as you know, we asked him to be here mm -hmm. and he wasn't comfortable coming to talk about this. Do you know why he declined? I do. His main concern with all of this is that he wants me to feel supported and to do anything that I need to do, and he just wants this to be about me. But I spoke to him this morning and last night, and he was really supportive and very excited for me to be able to have a chance to talk. That's terrific. That's a true dad, right? Yes. Supporting his daughter. And, you know, and also he's processing. I mean, this is not only about his relationship with you, but I'm sure processing the fact that his wife had an affair, you know, it's your huge. mom, it's yeah. huge. So let's talk about your mom. She died 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. How angry are you at her about the secret? 
I have had so many different emotions since I found out, and most of them were within the first 48 hours. I am angry, I am upset, I felt lonely, I felt abandoned, I felt stripped away of everything. I felt this was her way after 20 years of coming out to say just, ha ha, one last thing I didn't tell you. So it has been a roller coaster. Wow. And even now, it, um, I still, one minute I'm angry at her, and the next minute I'm like, I can't believe that she didn't tell anybody. Um, that she never told me. Um, it, it's just, it's so many different emotions. How hard do you think it was for her to keep this secret? Like, unbelievably hard. <laughs> you didn't know my mom, but she, this was not something that I would have expected she would have been able to do by any means. Um, How she, so? She was um, very social, very talkative, a little bit narcissistic. Things were usually about her and what was going on with her. And I just can't imagine that in all of the conversations that we had or the time, many times when she was very angry with me, that she didn't just kind of spit it out. You know, one thing that struck me is that you said that this was like her way to come back after 20 years and go, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. That really struck me. Did you have... Not a great relationship with your mom? We didn't have a good relationship. Um, anybody that you would talk to would tell you that my mother loved me very much, but that's not the way that she made me feel. And pretty much my entire life, um, I never felt like I stacked up and that I was what she wanted me to be. And whenever we were together, it was never good. Five minutes, 10 minutes before something would start. Um, an argument, a disagreement. So it was a difficult relationship. There were moments that were good. Um, I loved my mother. I didn't necessarily like her so much. That's a good way to put it. Do you think that she was hard on you because of this? A lot of things make a lot of sense now that this has come to light. Uh, why she was so irritated that I thought my dad was wonderful or that we were close or closer than she thought that I was with her. And I just think it, it, it adds so much more to my story, right, of why she was angry. And maybe it was because she was keeping that secret that the anger always would come out. So when you found out the results, you started investigating. So can you describe what you did? I became slightly obsessed. For two weeks, I just started digging and would go into the different DNA sites. And I used both of them since we had taken both of the tests and was able to find a common denominator of a great grandmother that belonged to one person who was a second cousin, another person who appeared to be a first cousin. And so I narrowed it down to three men within this family. They were all brothers. And I'm like, it really has to be one of them. And then I pulled up obituaries and read people. It's amazing what you can find out about people in the obituary. And in one of the people that was in question, there was a comment um, about a loving niece. And this person happened to be on one of the DNA sites. And so I reached out to them while this was still fresh about a month, maybe a month and a half ago. And unless you um, go into the site, you don't see that you have messages from it. So she just hadn't been in. But on Friday, she happened to go in and responded immediately to me. And, and then that's kind of what, how everything kind of evolved from Friday. So this is, the confirmation is very, very new. So you narrowed it down to mm -hmm. three men. We're gonna find out how you figured out who the biological father is next. Great. Welcome back. I'm Mel Robbins, and I've been talking with Wendy, who learned at 52 years old that her father wasn't really her biological father after taking a home DNA test. So, Wendy, you were able to narrow it down to three men. How did you determine who your biological father is? More narrowing down, and at this point, my father and I agreed that it would be fine to speak with some relatives, and so I called my mom's sister, and she was familiar with the name, and then she linked that to some good friends, of which one happened to be my godmother, and that kind of closed the door. And then once I had that information, there was someone that I had reached out to through one of the DNA tests, their um, uh, website. And I reached out to this person. They finally responded when they saw the message. And we were able to connect last Friday. And when we spoke, she said that she knew of me, not necessarily who I was, but she knew that this person had a child and that nobody knew about it. So for me, that, that sealed the deal. So through reading the obituary and talking to other relatives that were still alive on your side, mm -hmm. you pieced together the clues to be able to get on the phone with this 
person. What is her name? Her name is Michelle. And you just spoke to her a few days ago. Yes. And you've never met her. Nope. And she confirmed something that made you say, holy cow. A big holy cow. She confirmed that she and her mom knew about me. What was that moment like? It was good and bad. It was good because I felt proud of myself that I had figured it out. Um, sorry, <laughs> a little confirmation that I was doing the right thing and not completely crazy. And then it felt bad because it again was one more piece of confirmation. And through a lot of this, um, one of my main concerns has been that I want my dad to be okay through all of this because it's painful for him in a different way than it's painful for me. Mm -hmm. And he's been very concerned about me being okay through all of this. Gotcha. But that tells us that not only did my mom know, but this gentleman also knew. And so did people in that side of the family. I believe- Because Michelle would be your first cousin. She's my second cousin. Second cousin. Second cousin. Okay. Her mom would have been my first cousin. And from what I understand, and we only had a five minute, very fast and furious conversation where we shared a lot of information, but she found out because her mother dealt with the legal aspects of the family and she saw something um, and she and her mom had talked about it. Wow. Um, but nobody else in the family, in his family knew about this except her and her mother. And you just learned this five days ago. Yes. And you know that she's here. Yes. And she's about to come out and be sitting right next to you. What are you feeling right now? I'm nervous, I'm excited. It brings more closure to it, which is good and bad because you still kind of want to think that someone's going to tell me this was a big mistake and it doesn't really pertain to you and I have to continue processing. And, and you know, there's some hurdles that go with that. Yeah, of course. Are you ready to see her? I am. Great, let's bring Michelle out. Hi. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I heard you both say, I'm so nervous, and mm -hmm. I saw you start crying. What are you feeling seeing her for the first time? Uh, I'm excited. The thing that turned a lot of this around was when I was on the phone with her, the first thing I said was, I'm not looking for anything. I'm not missing anything in my life. I just have some questions. And she was saying to me, hurry up, ask me what I think you're gonna ask me, but in <laughs> yes. a, uh, an excited, nice way. And I said, I don't know any easy way to put this, but I think <laughs> that your great uncle, your late great uncle is my biological father. And she said, I knew it. And she was so excited to talk to me that it changed the way I felt about everything in one moment of having a feeling of, I don't, I just want to answer my questions. I don't want to meet anybody. I'm not going to knock on any doors. I just want to know what happened or fill in the blanks. And she was so excited that it was crazy. Um, it was just, it felt really good. So Michelle, I see the tears. Yeah. What's happening for you? I'm just moment? emotional. Um, I lost, most of my family passed away in the last few years and he was one of those people and I was very close to him. So um, I did know about Wendy. I didn't know who she was. I knew that there was someone that existed and um, I just didn't really feel like it was my, <clears throat> excuse me, my secret to tell. So now that everybody's gone, it would be nice to reconnect with family and, um, you know, and we're the same age, so, which is really crazy. So it was exciting. You brought photos. I did. Yes. This is a picture. You've never me. seen what he looks like. No. Wow, that's really interesting for lack of a better word, to see someone that you don't know at all, but yet you know you have a biological relationship to. Yeah. As you look at that photo and you scan it, what are you searching for? Um, similarities, do I look like him? Um, and when I asked Michelle on the phone, was he nice? Was he, was he a good guy? Um, what was he like? Did he ever meet me? Just, yeah, I mean, there's... So what were the circumstances on how you knew, <clears throat> Michelle? I overheard a conversation between my mother and him um, about it, and he wanted it to remain a secret. He didn't want anybody to know. I'm not sure that he ever really wanted children. That is all I really know about it. I was younger at the time when I heard the conversation. But. And what's it been like for you to actually carry this secret. It's not a great feeling, especially because I was very close to his second wife. And 
I felt like I was hiding something from her and that kind of bothered me a little bit. But again, I didn't feel like it was my place to say anything. And for all I knew, she actually might have known, which turns out she did not. But it was way before they were married. So it didn't, you know, it wasn't anything that, other than not knowing about you, it didn't mm -hmm. affect her directly. You have a bunch of other photos. I do have there. a bunch of other pictures. Yes, I do. These are him. He was a police officer for a while in Miami, and then he came back up upstate New York, and he was a sheriff for a while. Um, he was a pilot. He was a Green Beret. Wow. Yeah. What are you thinking, Wendy? Um, for all the things that I didn't want to know, now I want to know. You, <laughs> you want to have to fill in the blanks and the details and, and know what made this person tick. He was very smart. He was very um, loyal to his family. He was a very kind man. Was he close with his siblings and his family? He was wasn't very family, close was with it? his siblings. He was close with his sisters. He had two brothers and three sisters. Most of his sisters had passed away. My grandmother, um, he was close to. Okay. She lived the longest. And his brothers, I believe one is still alive, but we don't have any contact. So, and I don't believe he was close to them. Okay. Your grandmother was key in my little sleuthing history Julia? of figuring things yeah. out. Yeah. Yep, that was his sister that he was the closest to. You know what I'm, I'm noticing as I'm watching you look at these pictures? I mean, it's impossible to do, but I can't help but put myself in that chair and think about, God, what would I be feeling as I'm flipping through these photos seeing an entire family that I'm connected to? And all of this stuff and knowing that some of these people knew. Is some of that going through your mind right now? It is absolutely going through my mind as, as we were talking about. It's the roller coaster of emotions. It's excitement. It's fear. There's a lot of fear in what this. What are you afraid of? Um, it's okay. What sorry. was that? No, don't. I, what was that? Um, I love my dad. Of course. Pieces. So part of it is that um, you don't want to take anything away from that, and I know it doesn't. So the fear is that you don't want to learn too much. It's just, as you're going through it, it's, it's a very strange feeling. And when I first found out, I felt really guilty. And I had nothing to do with this, but um, because I felt like I had to be the one to tell him, so. That's a lot. Thank you for bringing all these photos. Sure, my pleasure. You know, the reason why secrets are so damaging is because a single lie discovered is enough to create doubt in every truth. And so we're going to be right back and we're going to be talking about how do you rebuild after a secret like this is revealed. Welcome back, I'm Mel Robbins, and we're back talking about family secrets and the identity crisis the truth can reveal. Now, Wendy took a DNA test and discovered that the man who raised her, her dad, was not her biological father. In fact, he was Michelle's great uncle, and Wendy and Michelle are just meeting here for the first time. We're also joined by Dr. R.G. Allen Wilson, a family therapist who is amazing. <laughs> Dr. R.G., what do secrets reveal about the people who keep them? Yeah, re secrets reveal people who may have had their own trauma. Um, they may repeat that trauma. They also, and you were saying it a little bit earlier, Wendy, you were saying uh, that your mother may have had real difficulty holding on to that secret. And that's traumatizing not only for the person that's holding on to the secret, but for the person that the secret is being kept from, along with the entire family system. It, it just is traumatic. Could it explain some of the tension between the two of them? Yeah, when you think about a mother and a daughter, that's a strong bond. And I think that that tension was because the mother knew mm. that she was holding on to something and that she couldn't reveal it. No one wants their child to not respect them for a secret that they're keeping, right? Yeah. And at the same time, we know that we all are human and we all make mistakes. And so how do you repair that if you're not ever, ever able to reveal it? Right. And now this is just one story, but with the rise of these DNA tests, 
I mean, is this becoming more common to have a secret like this shock a family? Absolutely, and it can turn the family upside down. Secrets really keep us sick. And with the DNA test, I mean, I've had clients that have gotten siblings revealed and not because of great circumstances. Mm. And ultimately, what I say to people is, you've gotta do the work. Once you find this information out, you've gotta embark on self-care because it can emerge some really difficult emotions. You were talking about that roller coaster anger, resentment, fear, guilt, uh, fear of loss, which is often the reason why we keep the secrets in the first place. We don't want to lose people. That's right. right. That's right. So if you uncover something like this, you have this shocking news, what, what do you do? What's yeah. the first thing yeah. you do? First step is to think about your self-care, right? Think about the fact that our history is meant to inform us. It does not have to define us, right? And a lot of times we get defined by the secret and all of a sudden now the secret is us, but that's not true. We can sort of turn the mess that we come from into a message. So we've got to take care of ourselves first and foremost. Sometimes it throws us into therapy, which is a good thing, right? And we begin to process the information because that pain can be harnessed into power. And then we can focus on what the purpose of it. It's kind of like the layers of an onion. You know, when you peel back the layers, it makes you cry first, mm -hmm. right? In order to feel, you have to heal, right. right? And then you can't heal and feel what you don't reveal. So it's all a process of our healing journey. But a lot of us don't want to embark on it because it's painful. You know, I noticed, Michelle, you greeted this with relief and you wanted to talk about it and you've been generous in bringing photos and you even said you're excited because yes. you've lost family <clears throat> members to discover Wendy, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, but what do you do for those folks that are watching at home where you don't get that kind of greeting? How do you process that? Yeah, you know, I, I think for all of us, there are these times when we just have a big fat question mark. We want to know why. You said it, Wendy, before, there's the blank and we want to fill in the blanks. Well, the beginning process of that is to be courageous with ourselves, to begin to understand more about ourselves. Mm -hmm. I call it radical self-care, right? Creating a paradigm shift. So if you're at home and you recognize you're experiencing your own identity crisis. You thought that you were happily ever after in a marriage, and now you're tell divorce to us part. You're divorcing, or your family secret is that your parent is not who they are. You then have to begin to do the work to begin to understand you first, and then move forward in understanding your circumstances, and absolutely do not define yourself by it.